Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Discover Successful and Innovative Ways to Pass the ASWB Social Work Licensure Exams, hosted by Springer Publishing Company and presented by Dawn Apcar. My name is Kate Dimmock, and I am the Editorial Director responsible for the Social Work Publishing Program here at Springer. Dr. Apgar has helped thousands across the country pass the ASWB exams at all levels of licensure. She has taught in both undergraduate and graduate social work programs and has extensive direct practice, policy and management experience in the social work field. Please note that this webinar will be recorded and posted on our website. You can ask questions through the chat feature. So please feel free to post any questions during the presentation and Dr. Apgar will either respond at that time or at the end of the presentation, time permitting. And it's over to you, Dawn. Thank you so much, Kate. And I want to thank uh, Springer Publishing for sponsoring this uh, webinar. Uh, Kate knows that I hate uh, long introductions, so I appreciate the brevity. Um, what I really want people to know on the webinar is really I'm one of them. So uh, I am uh, currently in academia, but I've spent most of my professional career in practice. I am a licensed uh, social worker, and I've been uh, working with um, supervisees, students, um, preparing them for licensure prep for many, many years. So you know a little bit about me, which is on this slide. That, that's what I look like, in case you're uh, wondering. You'll get to see me during the Q&A. But what I'd like to do is find out a little bit about you. So I'm assuming that on this webinar, we have students um, or practitioners who are studying to take the examination. We also have educators like myself, undergraduate or graduate educators who are wondering how to help uh, students prepare for the exam. We may have some supervisors, clinical supervisors and administrators helping their employees uh, get ready for the exam. We may have people who are doing test prep, either professional associations or other entities or um, staff of uh, social work associations, or maybe you fall into that other um, category. So uh, what I would ask you to do is if you could uh, indicate, maybe I know probably if you're a social worker, you fall into many of those categories, but if you could just indicate which category best uh, represents you, we'll do a quick poll and get a chance to see who's joining us today. Uh, it's okay if uh, you, you answer. Oh, okay, great. So uh, you'll see the results. It looks like we have lots of students uh, and practitioners probably studying for the test, some educators, some administrators, um, and some staff as well. So the good thing is we uh, this webinar, while only an hour, is really geared to all of the groups. So I'll talk a little bit about if you're a test taker, what might help you. Um, and I'm seeing people typing into the chat, or if you're an educator, some strategies for um, or administrator for helping others pass the exam. So uh, it wouldn't be a webinar, right, uh, without learning objectives. Uh, so what uh, our focus for the next hour is going to be, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the challenges associated with studying for and passing the exam. We're going to, I'm going to give you some strategies. Uh, to help you as you study. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk about some of the new resources that are available um, uh, with the new print books and, and the new online uh, learning management uh, community. So you'll know more about number three when I get to the end of the webinar. And then hopefully we'll be able to have uh, an opportunity. For, we will, no, not hopefully, we will have an opportunity for questions and answers. So I don't need to tell this group, given that most of you are students and practitioners, that uh, licensure is important, right, to social workers. Um, every state, uh, every state has uh, licensure, uh, clinical licensure. Uh, many states have uh, licensure at the master's and the, the bachelor's level. Uh, licensure extends actually, you know, outside of Northern America as well. So the ASWB exams are used uh, widely. Licensure is often linked, right, to um, employment and uh, to uh, promotion. So um, you'll see some uh, current data, some workforce data, 
a little over 62% of uh, MSW graduates are employed in jobs that require a license. Um, jobs which require license pay more. Um, four out of five MSW graduates either plan to become uh, licensed clinical social workers or pursuing clinical licensure um, immediately after uh, graduation. So for those of you that are um, academics on the call, we know that um, post-graduation outcomes are really important. And so um, helping students uh, prepare for um, both, and we'll talk about it, uh, physically prepare for and mentally prepare for uh, licensure exams is really important. And uh, pass rates uh, increase post-graduation outcomes with regard to both employment and um, earnings, okay? Uh, we also find that many schools, uh, uh, many schools uh, help uh, students prepare for the licensure exams and students uh, have a high degree of satisfaction with these kinds of prep courses that are integrated within undergraduate and graduate um, educational programs, because this is really an opportunity for students to realize the fruition of all their hard work, right, and to see the tangible benefit of being prepared for and passing uh, licensure post-graduation. So we all know that's why you're here, right? That licensure is important to uh, social work. And one thing I should also say is it's important to clients as well. So sometimes we think about you know, ourselves, but uh, licensure uh, has uh, a very valuable consumer protection function. Uh, I was the chair of my licensing board for many years and uh, you know, social work regulation is really important so that we can make sure that um, people who are licensed have the minim minimum necessary knowledge to practice competently. And we also have the ability for consumers, right, to have a place to report any conduct which is, is not acceptable. Uh, so we uh, know that some social workers do have difficulty uh, passing the exam. Many are, um, and we'll look at the pass rates in a second, are, are able to pass the first time. But we also know that the licensure exams are often very different from what students are uh, expecting or prepared for. Um, and that there is a, a segment of graduates that have uh, difficulty, right? And so I see people posting in the chat and those are actually the people that I talk to most. Um, here, I. We, as social workers, we always like to have a kind of glass half full perspective. So I, I should say that um, approximately three out of four social workers pass uh, the first time, okay? Um, but that also means that about 25%, depending on the exam of our colleagues, are um, have difficulty. And so I'm gonna talk about what some of those difficulties are um, and maybe some strategies uh, to, to overcome those uh, difficulties. And obviously, if you know people are, are posting that uh, they may fall into that category, that can cause a lot of anxiety. It can be expensive because you'll see the, the fees uh, that are listed there. And every time uh, you take an ASWB exam, you need to pay for it. So if you're um, sitting for the associate or the bachelor's or master's, right? That um, the cost is $230, where the, as the advanced generalist or clinical exams are uh, $260. So <clears throat> obviously this is a high stakes exam and um, you know people wanna pass uh, the first time, okay? So uh, what this is actually, um, I, I laugh because it, um, a lot of times when I talk about journal articles to my students, their eyes glaze over. Um, but I have posted here um, an article that um, I wrote recently that was published in the Council on Social Work Education's Journal of Social Work Education. And I think this might be the, the article, um, the one article that you find relevant to your, your current situation. And uh, what we often uh, 
find is that after graduation, people, uh, students who maybe have done well in field, they have good grades, they've graduated, they have no indication that in fact, they may um, have difficulty passing the exam. They find that uh, sometimes they do and they wonder why, right? They're, they think I've had people who have internalized it. They thought, you know, it's their fault. And this article really explains the, um, this article really explains the difference between a licensure exam and competency related to licensure exams and uh, social work education. So when we think about social work education, right, and the nine competencies which are um, uh, in our EPAS standards from the Council on Social Work Education, they're really based on practice behaviors, right? How are people, what kinds of practice behaviors, how are they able to do in the field, for example? How are they able to demonstrate their uh, competency? And when we talk about licensure exams, right, that's really based on knowledge. And behavior is based on knowledge, but it's also based on lots of other things. Right. I always I use this analogy. Right. I um, when my son was born, my first son, I read a lot of uh, child raising books, like a lot of books about how to raise children. Right. And I tried to do everything that they said. Uh, it doesn't always come out that way. And so, um, you know, right. That's the difference between behavior, right, and knowledge. And so, here. Um, what we find is that people are sometimes uh, caught, I don't want to say in that abyss, but uh, they're, they're struggling to try to figure out how is this assessment of competency different than um, the one that I used when my undergraduate or graduate education. So I'd love to talk to you about this article. You can see it here. Uh, feel free to look it up and, um, and read it. It's, I think it's interesting. Hopefully you will too. Um, so what does it take to pass the licensure exam? So these are uh, four key areas, four uh, ingredients, right? I, I made it look like a, uh, the good, a little licensure question. Uh, the good part about this question is you can't get the wrong answer, right? Um, in that it certainly takes uh, time out of your schedule to study. And we're gonna be talking about all of these in more depth, but it takes time out of your schedule to study. Uh, it takes, um, I see people talking about test anxiety. It certainly takes keeping calm. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it is a multiple choice test. And so there is, um, uh, there is some learning curve, I think, with becoming familiar with kind of the test question formats. And I, again, I, I wanna talk about each of these areas. And uh, the last area is knowing the social work content. Okay, so one of the things that's I think important about this particular slide is I, I, and I see people posting, I wish I could focus more on the chat and I certainly will be reviewing it later. But um, when I work with people who have difficulty, one of the first things I do is try to figure out which one of these problems, right? Or maybe they're having multiple problems uh, they're having because the strategy for addressing each of these is very different. And so if you don't identify which of these problems is, you know, is um, critical uh, to your success, then, you know, it's very hard. Like, for example, anxiety management is fine, but if it's not a, a, a test anxiety problem, then you need to focus, let's say, on content or, or question wording or other, okay? So if you're out there and I see people sort of posting in the chat that they've, you know, had difficulty, I would just take a look at these four and I'm going to go into each and try to figure out which one of those um, may be a difficulty for you personally. So let's talk a little bit just about taking time out of your schedule, okay? Um, uh, there's no time like the present to take a uh, licensure uh, test, okay? And I have to laugh because, you know, they say, um, if you want something done, ask a busy person. Um, well, social workers are incredibly busy. Uh, and so they are often, you know, students, social workers tend to be very involved in their communities, they have family responsibilities. And so um, 
lots of times it's, you know, kind of a matter of uh, carving out time, right, to be able to study the material. Uh, when I was studying for the licensure test, I, I say my house was never cleaner, right, because everything looked uh, better, funner, right? I was organizing things that I hadn't organized in years uh, um, because, uh, you know, studying can be a little bit onerous or a little bit um, difficult. So uh, one thing I, I would just, you know, say is you really need to pick a date and you need to study to that particular date, okay? And a lot of people will ask me, um, you know, I, what's a good amount of time to study? I get this all the time. Well, uh, we're gonna talk more about that. I can't really ask, I can't really um, answer that because some of you will just have more time than others. Some of you can, you know, just devote a little bit of time each day. Some of you might need to take, you know, a week off from work and study like you're going to work. So um, I'm, I'm chuckling at these posts. So uh, here at home, because I totally agree. I always find other things to do. So um, one thing I'd like you to take away from this webinar, if you're one of those people, is uh, I really want you, if you're eligible to take a the test, right? I really want you to pick a date um, and I'm gonna tell you how to develop a study plan, but develop a study plan for uh, to that date, okay? Um, one thing I would say is in some um, states, you are eligible to take the bachelor's or the master's uh, test prior to graduation, while in others, you have to wait until after you graduate. That's actually a jurisdictional issue. And so you're going to need to find out in your particular jurisdiction. Um, uh, for the clinical exam, many of you may or may not know, but ASWB, um, has changed its policy and is instructing states that they need to come in to compliance with their policy. And so by uh, July 1st of 2021, people will need to have their practice experience before sitting for the clinical exam. So um, this webinar, it's only an hour. So you'll need to find out when you're eligible and I see people are taking it in a few months, which is great. But uh, whenever you're eligible, please, please, uh, schedule the exam, okay? Because sometimes I'll see people in test prep programs year after year and they just haven't scheduled uh, the test. So I love how people are posting their dates, okay? Um, so developing a study plan. Um, uh, the uh, Here's some tips, if you will, uh, for developing a study plan. Uh, one, ASWB now makes available the content outlines for the examination. So you can see them on their website. I've been doing this so long that um, uh, the content outlines weren't actually publicly available um, when I started. I think it was in 2000, and if there's ASWB on the line, they can correct me, but I think they became available back in around 2011, uh, but I could be off. Um, but if you don't have the content outline or the blueprint for the test, you definitely want to um, download it. You definitely want to become uh, familiar with it um, and really understand the uh, topics that you're going to be uh, tested on. They call those topics knowledge, skills, and ability statements. So um, those are um, in short KSAs. So just being familiar with the content outline is extremely helpful, right? And I always, uh, I have lots of sayings, but one of the sayings that I have is, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Um, and uh, with regard to developing a study plan, probably the, the best tip or strategy that I have is really uh, taking that content outline and, and you know, breaking it up, making it manageable, because when you first look at it, it it's a little bit overwhelming, right? There's lots of different topics, whereas um, that's kind of how I wrote the books, right? I, um, I literally just looked at the topics and thought about, well, what do I need to write today? What do I need to write about tomorrow? And so um, you can do the, you can do the same. Obviously, um, cramming is, is not a good idea. Um, in social work practice, I have a a saying with clients, I say, uh, develop a plan and work the plan. Okay, 
develop a plan and work the plan. And you can get the content outlines off the ASWB website. And I'll, I'm gonna show you in a second. But, um, and so here you can't, you have no control over the outcome, but you do have a control over your preparation. And so I think um, one way to sort of increase confidence is to really um, build in breaks to your study plan. When people have told me I'm studying eight hours a day, I get a little bit worried. Um, so take that and sort of, you know, parcel off the different uh, topics, okay? Um, the, uh, the other thing is it's really important that in your study plan that you understand the material, okay? So sometimes people will say, I memorize, blah, 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 and I didn't pass. So this is um, uh, really a, a exam about your understanding and comprehension of the material. And uh, so you want to be able to apply it. And we're going to talk about different kinds of questions uh, in a second. And so one of the things that's important in a study plan is to build in time to really think about it, right? To really ruminate about it and to be able to apply it, okay? Um, so keeping calm, and I see lots of questions coming in. I'm happy to answer those. I just wanna make sure I get through the material because I have lots and lots of slides and then I'll certainly go back and, and I have a, some faithful co-pilots that will make sure that I answer them. Uh, so keeping calm when you're studying, right? And test anxiety is uh, really important. So one thing I, I say is, um, and I like how we're social workers. I love how people are helping one another in the chat. So if you know the answer to something and you want to um, help one another or feel free to post, because the, I love that. It's, it's really like a true learning community, right? Um, many of you have lots of these answers because you've been through it as well. So thanks. Uh, thanks for those of you that are posting answers. Um, so the licensure exams are really high stakes, as you know, right? I posted the cost uh, that um, they're, you know, the exams are expensive. Uh, and I will say, again, I don't know if ASWB is on, on the line, but um, they're expensive for a reason, right? There's a lot riding on them and there's a lot of security and preparation and it's, it's certainly not easy. So, um, but for someone who's taking the exam, if you're paying 230 or $260, obviously um, you wanna only take those uh, tests once, okay? Um, so they you know, are high stakes exams, but one thing that I wanna um, stress about this is uh, uh, my, uh, my oldest son is actually uh, a freshman in college. And when he was taking the SATs, uh, a year or so ago, I never said to him, well, I want you to go in there and you're going to take the SATs and I want you to get the score that you want. Like you're only taking this once, right? You're, I want you to make sure that you get the, the, the score that, you know, you need to get into college to the college of your choice the first time. Of course I didn't do that, right? And if you're a parent on the line, you, you, you can probably relate to that, right? So, um, I just would like to say uh, to, to social workers is um, we need to be kind to ourselves. Um, we uh, need to, to show the same compassion to ourselves that we show to our clients. And um, I want us to get out of this sort of all or nothing thinking. Uh, we wouldn't use it with clients. We wouldn't use it with our family members. And um, sometimes uh, we use it with ourselves and that's, that's not helpful. So um, uh, it's really, um, you know, important for you to, to, to be thinking about that, right? Um, and I, I say this, right, like, um, because, and I see people, you know, uh, posting and things like that, but uh, one thing that will increase your st stress level, and I've had people say this, I'm not scheduling my date until I'm sure I'm going to pass, okay? I don't want, uh, we that's not helpful, okay? So sometimes it can take someone, right, a time to just get familiar, and we're gonna talk about the test conditions and things like that. Um, so sometimes, again, this, on the second try or whatever, they uh, pass because this is in fact very different from lots of, of things that you may have done before, okay? 
Um, one of the things that uh, can sometimes cause anxiety is that this exam is given in a uh, in a highly controlled environment. So here are just some screenshots, right, that I downloaded from ASWB, but sometimes people are a little bit shocked that they have to have their glasses inspected or they have to take off their coat or things have to be locked up. Or I always say, think about airport security, right? Um, you know, it's, um, they, they think they're gonna be treated like, you know, we treat clients and agencies. Now, obviously these are given at testing centers, so they're very strict. And um, uh, I think just understanding that you can actually take a virtual tour um, uh, of the testing center. Um, uh, you can go onto ASWB's website, Pearson View is their vendor, right? And you can actually look and see what some of the uh, sites are. Yeah, and people are saying this is pre-COVID. So if you're noticing this woman doesn't have a mask, uh, laugh out loud. It's uh, this is these are pre-COVID uh, pictures. They're um, you know they're highly um, uh, protective of you know uh, sanitary and other conditions. Okay. Um, another thing uh, to sort of manage stress, and I put up here. Uh, there's a little infographic, so I'm going to show you uh, the new resources in a second, and they're available actually um, via the the exam prep connect uh, platform, but just getting familiar with the exam. And I see people who are posting different things like this is how many questions, this is how many you could get wrong or whatever. All of those are great thing, um, ways to manage stress, okay? Um, as I said, uh, making a plan and working the plan is um, great, uh, engaging in self-care, uh, taking a virtual tour of the testing site can be helpful. Um, one thing, and I, I've seen that some people have posted that they've had difficulty with the exam in the past. Sometimes I uh, suggest to people that if you're retaking the test, sometimes going to a different site can be helpful, right? And it may not be something that you've even thought about in the past. Um, uh, not because it's easier at one site or harder or the test is different, but um, it's, you know, different, it's just like speaking, okay? When I go into a room, if I'm speaking and, you know, things go great, the next time I walk into that room, I have a lot of confidence, right? If I walk in and the AV is bad, the heat is, you know, the air conditioning is broken or whatever, I walk in and, right, people are saying I had the same computer. That's, I would be stressed, right? If I'm walking into the same site, same computer, same conditions. And so it's kind of a psychological thing but what I, um, if you're retaking the test, I always say you need to use a different study strategy. You need to figure out why, um, you know, what didn't maybe go as well for you. And then going to a new site can really be a kind of a, a new approach, okay, a new approach. So we could probably spend a lot of time talking about stress, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. The third area has to do with analyzing the questions correctly. And so one thing I would, uh, I would recommend is um, becoming familiar with multiple choice tests, all right? I, um, uh, I am a, an academic, right? And so academics rely a lot on course evals. Uh, I always tell my administrators, my course evals are always gonna be a little bit lower than everybody else's because I give a lot of standardized tests. Students hate standardized tests. Uh, and they always say, I wish I didn't have so many standardized tests. And then I wait and a couple years later, I always get an email from a student who says, Dr. Apgar, oh, there was a method to your madness, okay? Um, so uh, I would just say that, um, and I am a director of a program, we rarely use standardized tests in our program. Um, and so you might get through your whole undergraduate or graduate uh, education and never have taken a standardized test, right? You may have been using papers, uh, simulations, all great things for practice, but you don't understand what a STEM is. You don't understand what distractors are. You don't understand how to eliminate answers. And so there is um, certainly a lot of people like practice questions. Right? I always get lots and lots of questions about practice questions. And really, 
I think um, the reason that they like practice questions is really becoming familiar with that particular kind of structured format. And so uh, I would definitely say when you're thinking about it, getting familiar uh, and people are, you know, uh, I see that's great that your school's using standardized tests, but really becoming familiar with multiple choice tests and how to answer them is uh, helpful. And if you take any kind of test prep program or maybe your school offers one or whatever, um, they usually will go over uh, these, okay? The other thing that um, is helpful is just to understand, and again, this information um, is available um, on the ASWB website as well. Many of you, you intuitively know this, so you don't have to listen to the recording again, but um, understanding the different types of questions. And so a lot of the content uh, is similar between the bachelors and the masters and the clinical and the advanced generalist. Um, but the kind of, and, and ASWB calls these levels, uh, I, I might advocate to, to talk about, I'm not sure they're levels, I like to call them types, because uh, one is not necessarily harder than another, but um, on the bachelor's test, you will see maybe more recall kinds of things where they're kind of straightforward, right? Um, having to, let's say, pick out the best definition of a particular term. Um, you'll see some of those on the masters maybe as well. Um, but by the time you take the uh, clinical or advanced generalist, if that's in your, uh, if that's a professional goal for you, you're gonna see very few of those. You are going to see a lot of reasoning questions, okay? And those are those long vignettes, okay? Um, those long scenarios. And so um, a lot of times the, uh, the I, I, again, I don't use the word trick because there isn't any tricks, but a lot of times the challenge there is picking out what is the topic that um, is being tested, okay? What is the topic being tested? So you're going to see many on the, again, clinical and advanced generalist reasoning questions. And then, you know, on the masters, you might see a combination of these three types, but becoming familiar with those is, is very uh, helpful, okay? And then the last uh, area really is knowing the content. Uh, it's, it's, I keep forgetting you can't see me because I'm very animated here in my house, but um, this is really important um, and probably the least fun. Uh, um, it really gets down to good old fashioned studying, okay? Um, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a second. But one of the things that I find out, you know, that I find when I'm working with all of these social workers across the country, right, related to social work, uh, to licensure prep, is that, and, and this figure is out of a workforce study, that about 81.5% of people um, are uh, doing clinical, right, or direct practice work. I, I'm, I just um, have an article in review about macro practice and I was looking up some data last night and I found that 83% of people when they enter their MSW program are, um, are wanting to work on the micro level, okay? So the reason I'm bringing this up is sometimes uh, people are quite uh, surprised when we get into the content about questions on uh, community organization, right? Or on um, social action or meso practice. And uh, I would say we, uh, many social workers have sort of an implicit micro bias just because that's the kind of work that they, uh, you know, have been focusing on, that's what they've been studying, and maybe that's where their internships have been. But these are social work exams, so it's really important, right, especially on that bachelor's and master's level, that um, we are very familiar with not only the micro, but the meso and the macro content, okay? Um, and, and even on the clinical level, right, because we're social workers. Uh, just because we may be doing micro work, we still have a responsibility to address systemic um, issues which cause inequities 
and uh, to advocate for social justice. So one thing I would also say is, you know, it's really important. The KSAs and the content outlines are maybe broader than what so many social workers have really seen in practice and may be prepared for. Uh, so getting back to just studying the content, okay, some people say they really haven't developed good study skills, right, because they haven't taken these kinds of four-hour uh, standardized tests. There can be a lot of gap between, uh, they're all four hours, right, um, they're all the same, they're all four hours, they're all 170 questions, 150 of those count towards passing, okay, so that's doesn't matter which exam or what state you're taking it in. So um, everybody has areas that they feel strong in and areas that they might need to study more in. So I laugh because uh, when I was an MSW student, I took research over the summer. Someone told me it was easier. Uh, so I thought that was a good idea. And um, I uh, unfortunately did not have a very good professor. I know he's not listening, so I can say this. Um, we met three times, we didn't have a book, and I got an A, okay? Um, uh, I, I should have been much more upset over it, but I was carrying, I was working and doing other things, but it just meant that when I went on for further education, and actually when I took my licensure test, I had to study. That was one of my gap areas. I really didn't understand uh, research principles, which is kind of funny because that's what I teach now, but um, so we all have our areas and we need to think about what those areas are. And uh, I always say there's no um, time like the present to take it because certainly trying to take the test as soon after you graduate is uh, helpful. Now, if you've been out for a while and let's say you're grandparented in and you're sitting for it now, don't worry. I work with lots of people who are very successful in taking it um, post-graduation, but you know, certainly it's, it's nice to be uh, taking it close to when you took those uh, courses, okay? And I see everyone answering everyone's questions. So I wanna leave time for questions, but I do wanna talk a little bit about um, some of the new resources. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the reasons that we're sponsoring this uh, webinar is we have new editions of the uh, examination guides and practice tests coming out. Um, I love the covers, so kudos to, to Springer. I didn't have anything to do with the covers, and um, uh, but these are what the new guides look like. So if you've used maybe one of my books and it looks different than this, it's probably because you're using a prior edition. And I want to talk about some of the new features that uh, we've been um, we've been planning for months. Okay, so we've made good time of the COVID isolation here. Uh, on the slide, you're going to see. Uh, and I would encourage you to either write it down, maybe take a picture of it, or this will is recorded, you'll have available, but you'll see Springer has a kind of launch page and you'll see lots of testimonials. Uh, they're out now um, and you can buy them via this webpage, but you'll see them from organizations, you'll see them from people um, who have um, found the guides, not only you know these editions, but past editions uh, very helpful, okay? so. Uh, I always say, you know, I, I, I try to help people and I think uh, social workers are great networkers and, and they're often the people who are sort of the best advocates for identifying good, good materials. Um, one of the things uh, that's kind of unique about uh, not only these editions but past editions is that there's one for each uh, category of the exam. Okay, so these are the four ASWB exams. If there's anyone taking the associate's exam, that actually is the bachelor's exam. It just has um, a different pass point. So if you're there taking the associate's, you would be buying the bachelor's guide. Um, but these are the four, um, the four uh, ASWB exams, okay? Um, uh, and one of the things that's also unique is uh, there is a, a guide for the advanced generalist exam. And that, um, I, I feel very proud of that. There's only a few states and kudos, if there's anybody out there from my from Minnesota or Michigan, or you wanna share, but I feel very proud uh, that Springer um, has this book and um, because lots of times uh, there aren't separate uh, materials for the advanced generalist. And so it's great. 
Um, the, uh, so one of the things that um, I'm going to talk just briefly about is that these uh, people are asking what's the different, whatever. These, um, third these new editions come with what we call exam um, uh, Prep Connect. And I call, yay, Minnesota, thanks for the snow, by the way. Um, we're getting lots of snow here. So um, here in the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, so um, we have digital resources. Uh, we are, the prior editions have had apps and things like that, but we have now what we call Exam Prep Connect, which I like to call a learning community. So I, I want to talk just different, um, a little bit about both the print and the, um, uh, the digital resources. And so um, the, uh, one of the things that comes with Exam Prep Connect, which is the digital resource um, okay, so some people are saying their second edition did or whatever. Um, th there were some of the more recent books that when we were kind of, you know, um, when we were developing Exam Prep Connect, you may have had access to this, but if you have an older book, maybe you don't, okay? So here, um, Exam Prep Connect allows you to develop a study plan. I call it the Fitbit of, um, and I don't know if that's proprietary or not, but of social work exam prep. Um, I don't even wear my Fitbit anymore because I don't want to see that I'm only walking 25 steps. But um, literally, you put in your test date and it will tell you what you need to study, okay, um, each day in order to cover all the material, okay? So here you're gonna see the screen. This is just some screenshots, so I didn't have to worry about my internet connection, but this is what it looks like. You would have full access to this. You would go on. It says, I'm gonna take my exam here on December 30th. I have 73 days. And because of that, I need to get 16 study points each day, okay? So um, here, it really helps you kind of chunk up uh, the material. And you'll get this free, six months access, free with the new books, okay? Um, the other thing that's kind of fun, just because it's on the screen, I put it, uh, you'll see on the upper right-hand corner, there's a little coffee mug. So sometimes when I'm feeling down, uh, I just hit that coffee mug and it has little memes and other things, which really are great, fun, and stress relievers. So we've thought of kind of everything, okay? Um, so, so that's great. Um, the other thing that this has that uh, some of the earlier editions didn't is it is truly a community. So, um, and again, this is the third edition. So people are saying, I didn't get this or whatever. You might have a prior edition. You may have an old book, you know. So um, this uh, has an online uh, discussion board um, and it has the, I'm going to show you what it is. Um, looks like, but it allows for private and public discussions. I'm on it. I post every day. So you'll see different um, additional study resources, et cetera. And it's also a community. So I love the chat because people are sharing with one another, but it really gives you, and I, and I love people are posting their emails or whatever. It really, it's, it's not all about me. It really allows people to um, share things that they have um, found useful. Okay. So here's an example. Uh, I put this together. Uh, this is just a screenshot. Um, and if you are doing a study group, you can actually do it right inside this, um, this learning community. Okay. So you can actually develop your own private study group and you can communicate every, this does it all. So it's, it's exciting. So here, you know, people will post on, hey, I'm in Michigan and I want to know the process. Uh, here, you know, I'm having trouble learning about this. Um, so there's everything you can think of. You can also search the discussion. So I sometimes will say to people, search the discussion. I posted on this, you know, two months ago. So every every night, it's it's like waking up, I see new posts and I will post or other people will uh, post. So it's a great opportunity, okay? And again, you can do it within um, Exam Prep Connect. Here, in addition to the public, which is basically everybody's pub, um, you know, publicizing, you can also ask your friends. So I see people saying, I'm going to Columbia, I'm doing this, I'm in India. 
Um, you could create a private and people will ask me to join their study group. I, um, I get lots of requests and things. And so, um, you know, I see emails, but you could also do it this way. You could literally invite another user and you could, this is private only to you guys. So um, that's neat. And uh, for those who are educators or agency directors on the line, you would be able to, uh, I, I, I have a school that does this. They have a, a group just for their own students, okay? Or they have um, agencies, large agencies can connect. They can send out, it's just like using a, like a Blackboard or another kinds of things, but it's, it's much easier um, here within the, the um, platform. Uh, some people were asking what's the difference between um, the, the materials. Uh, really, one of the biggest differences between um, the second edition and the third edition is uh, I've added a lot, I've kind of reorganized, and I've added material to the front. So the blueprint is still the same. The KSEs have not changed, but I have expanded some of the content related to technology and ethics, a little bit about um, use of um, you know, uh, gender pronouns, uh, some other areas, but really the, I guess the most significant difference really is in the uh, front manner related to um, strategies and tips and um, just giving some more examples, okay? Um, so uh, this is a little, a little snippet from the, the table of contents of the new editions. The other thing I just, some of you already have the books. So, um, but I do want to show you that every book, whether it's a, you know, an earlier edition or this, and you could see this on the website, there is a separate full length practice test that comes, um, it's a separate sale, but a lot of times people will, um, the guides have their, their own full length test, but sometimes people are like, well, I've already done that test or I'm taking the exam for you know, a second time or whatever. I'd like to have access to another full length test. Every, if you go to uh, Springer's site, and I'll, uh, I'm gonna show it in a second, you can purchase um, a, uh, a, another full length test, which is different questions. So it's not duplicative. Um, and it's really meant to be complementary to the um, exam guide, okay? So um, it's a kind of affordable way to get access to a full-length test. And again, with these uh, new editions, they not only come in print, but you will get the uh, six-month access code to uh, use them online through advanced uh, exam prep connect as well. Uh, this is, you know, all of the KSAs are covered. So there's really a summary of, um, you know, material, uh, which is relevant for each of the exams. So it's really important that, you know, obviously you're using the book that's appropriate for uh, your category of the exam. And, um, you know, if you, I know uh, probably some people you might want to have used my books before, if you're, you know, studying for a different category, it's great to get uh, the, um, the new uh, category, because obviously the content outlines are a little bit uh, different. But I always say, hang on to your book, because you know if you're thinking about taking another category, it can always be a great resource. So please, uh, I know it's tempting to downsize or whatever, but hang on to it uh, if you can, because you never know. Uh, if you're taking the clinical or advanced generalist, you might want to use your master's or bachelor's book um, as a resource. Uh, so there's lots of fun things and I want to be, um, you know, aware of the time, but, uh, one of the things that the exam prep connect does is it also allows it's, um, people are like, well, what's the difference between the book or whatever? There are online flashcards. There are things that go with it, but, um, uh, that come with it that are, you know, stock that are developed by myself and the publisher, but also it's an online community. So this, I just made a screenshot, but there's literal. this is 16, but there's literally probably 70 uh, flashcard decks where people have created flashcards and you could subscribe to them for free. They, um, when you, when you do your own flashcards, you can put them out in the public. And so if you see an area that you, um, 
need to study, you can, um, you know, subscribe. And then as soon as you subscribe, they go into my sets. So it's really, again, helping one another. Um, um, and you're going to see lots of fantastic uh, resources, which are made by other, uh, other test takers. There's also a game center. I have to laugh. The Springer people are going to laugh because uh, they, uh, what I, it's, I, I, it took me a little while to get used to these games. People love them though. So if you like Bejeweled or these other things on your phone, we've made these kinds of games into study materials. So here uh, there's all kinds of games where you're matching flashcards. There's even a game called Sudden Death, which is uh, LOL, right? Uh, it's too funny. Um, don't worry, it has nothing to do with death, but it's really like about making sure your, your timing. And so this is, again, for people who are different kinds of learners, you know, you can compete against one another, but it's a way of, you'll see all the different um, games, okay? Uh, so it's holiday time and it doesn't matter what religion or whatever you are, it looks like Springer gave you a free discount code. Is that true, Lee? Are you there? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yay! So um, here, uh, if you're interested, uh, Springer, this website is actually the one I gave you before, but it looks like you can use, a, and you even use my last name. That's so funny. But um, you can use this code to get 25% off. Um, how long is this code good for, Lee? It is good for a couple of months through the end of January. Okay, so uh, great thing to put on your holiday list, right? If you're looking for a, a holiday gift for yourself or maybe a supervisee. Um, so anyway, here's uh, a code um, if you're, you're interested. Um, and if you just wanna check out the resources, uh, that's fine. So we're coming to the Q&A portion. I have 10 minutes left. I'm here. Uh, so uh, I am actually real. Welcome to my house. I, I think there's lots of, I don't know how many there are on the, you know, the webinar. You couldn't all fit in my, my little living room here, but welcome to my house. Um, and I'm I would love to take uh, any questions. And Lee, maybe you could start us off because it was hard for me to follow. Sure, more than happy to. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Um, let's start with, I see some of there, my friends on the chat. Hi sure. friends. <laughs> is there a way to get the online resources? If we've already had this, if we already have the second edition of the book. Uh, that's a Springer question. Yes, we can. <laughs> you can go to exam prep connect and we'll send out information to everybody in the follow-up email about direct access. Um, let's see what else. And I just, um, I could just say one thing. I see a sure. lot of people like saying, can I take it before I graduate? Do I have to take this? Like, yes. I actually am not going to get into that. And I'm, you know, happy to talk to people offline or whatever, because every state has different rules. And so right. if I say it for one person, it's going to be wrong in another state. So you're, the exams are universal. Um, right. And they do allow accommodations. Um, yes, you apply for those when you, um, register for the test but um and if you want the third editions go to the website springer's website let me uh, let me just go back if um i think my picture will stay just so people can sure. um but i'm not going to get into individual state specific things because that could eat up the next week totally uh one question is who do you contact to get an exam date so every state does require you to have pre-approval um, uh, they, um, so every state handles it differently. Some states actually use ASWB for their pre, you know, so I can't tell you how to be pre-approved, but, um, every state requires pre-approval. And once you get through their pre-approval process, they pass you off to ASWB. Okay. And then, um, ASWB has a, um, a portal right, where you go ahead and pay for the test, you know, apply for accommodations, you know, get a site, all of that. And you can actually take the test in a state, like, let's say I get pre-approved by New Jersey, but I'm uh, social distancing um, in Maine, 
right? I can still take the test in another state, even though I don't, um, you know, I don't have any intention of ever being licensed in that state, as long as there's a Pearson View testing center. Great. Uh, Tracy hey. asked, does your internship count as experience? Uh, again, I don't want to get too far into it, but in most right. states, no. Leah, oh. it's Kate. Uh, there was a question about ASWB resources and your resources, Dawn. And ASWB, I'm not, I don't know if this is correct, and I just saw it in the chat. They only recommend ASWB approved resources. I'm not sure if that was, you know, yeah. someone was misreading something, but if you could talk sure. about that. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Thank you, Kate. Um, so ASWB, right, their job is to develop, right, you know, um, and administer the test. So they, uh, just like any, so their executive director is a social worker, he's one of the, you know, they have good boundaries. And so they, um, they really stick like to, uh, they really don't want to get into test prep. So you can go on their site and you can, you know, learn about the test, you know, like how many questions is it and all that, but they really don't put out test prep resources because that really would be a conflict of interest, right? And so um, as far as recommending, I mean, they really don't, they, they're not in the business of really recommending test prep resources. So uh, the resources that ASWB puts out, um, obviously they have a very robust web page and I, I go on it all the time and I would encourage you to go on it if you're a test taker. Um, the other thing is they do have a kind of overview of the exams. It's not a test prep resource. It basically just um, is the blueprint or the content outline uh, which you can get from their website, right? And and again, things that are, it's kind of just um, pulling together stuff from their website um, into one place for all four categories. And then they do have the practice test. So they have an $85 full length practice test. Again, they don't, um, it, it's really to familiarize people with the wording and um, it doesn't, you know, and sort of the, the conditions and things like that. So it, it, it is a, a valuable resource, but as far as like courses or, you know, overview of content or, or those kinds of things, they actually don't develop them and they kind of stay away from them because obviously they want to, you know, remain neutral. Great. Uh, multiple people asked about your practice tests that are available through Springer. Maybe if you could just tell a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So I really, um, and one thing I would just say, again, I, I, I started by saying I'm a social worker. I really think that's very important because, um, you know, I'm, and I teach and, you know, I am, I'm really one of you. Uh, and so um, there are you know, lots of resources, but I, I, there was also a lot of test prep resources that are um, not developed by social workers or, you know, and I, I think regardless of what you use, uh, this is a, this is an exam, you know, written by a social work, you know, administered by a social work organization, the, the item writers are social workers and volunteers. And so I really think that's actually very important. Um, and, uh, I, um, the full length exam, both in the back of each guide and the one that I don't have a picture of it here, but the one that goes with it is really meant to be um, geared to replicate the content and the complexity of the actual test. So the number of questions are correct, you know, based on how many questions are in each of the four domains, you know, obviously the, the, the formatting of the questions in the back of the book or whatever for the clinical guide are very different than the bachelor's. So um, uh, those are there. So, um, and I really think, you know, a mock exam, uh, ASWB again, um, you know, sells one, there's one here, is very different than just answering apps with lots and lots of questions. You know, it's it's helpful to really just get the experience of sitting down and, and taking all 170 questions. And so that's really one of the reasons we, we've done it that way, right? Included the exact number, right? Included the, the right composition, in, uh, included the uh, types, right, of, um, 
of whether it's reasoning or recall or application. Great, thanks so much. Um, we have time for a couple more questions. Um, multiple people, Dawn, asked about the differences between the bachelors, the masters, the clinical, and advanced generalists. I know we don't have a lot of time, but maybe sure. you could say a real quick um, breakdown sure. between those. Thanks. So each is geared, um, ASWB undergoes a very comprehensive practice analysis. And they're really, again, um, sometimes I get like mail about why is this in here? Like why, you know, I don't, I, nobody makes up the content outline except ASWB. And really they do it based upon those who have taken and are licensed at those respective levels. So those are, and I don't, I could spend a lot of time on ASWB's um, website. They have a very comprehensive document, but um, there are different topics. Uh, uh, here's one on the bachelor's level, they do have the DSM, but it's not use of the DSM. So understanding what the you know di diagnostic and statistical manual is is important, but bachelor's level people don't diagnose, and so you're not going to find that like a lot of information about diagnoses or things in the bachelor's guide. Whereas obviously in the clinical, you know, there's a very robust discussion. So each is geared towards the respective content outline, right? Um, which is geared towards the content that's on that respective test. Great, and that's great because you answered the DSM question because we had a couple questions about that as well. Um, one additional um, question that, um, sorry, one additional question that somebody had was, um, do, do you have to take the test in multiple states for dual licensure? So, uh, um, no. Um, usually, and I mean, there's always a caveat because um, and with telehealth, I mean, I live in the New York, New Jersey area, so it's very common in my state, for example, to have people simultaneously licensed in multiple states. And you, you can be licensed in a state in which you don't reside. Most of the time, it's I use the analogy of SATs, right? SATs you use, you take, and then you apply to whatever colleges. It's the same here, okay? Um, right. Now, having said that, uh, it's, it's not always a one and done because if you've been out of practice for a long time, let's say you were licensed in one state, you're going to another state, but you've had gaps or you haven't practiced or you have, then sometimes states will say, listen, you took the exam too long ago, right? Or there's, you know, you've had gaps in your, your, your practice. But as far as like people saying, I'm taking the Indiana exam or I'm taking the mission, the exam is the same and you right. use it for a licensure in whatever state um, uses it. Every state uses the clinical exam. Most states use the master's. Far fewer use the bachelor's and advanced generalist. Great. Um, one other great question that we got from another person was, um, there are many test prep resources out there. What would you say makes yours the one to select? <laughs> um, so yeah. I think Nothing like putting me on the spot here, Lee. No, I'm just, of um, course. Uh, so one thing I would just, this is what I would say. First of all, I'm one of you, right? Like I, I've, you know, uh, I think that's important. Um, you know, though there are other resources out there. I'm not gonna, I don't put down and, and many of people who do them are colleagues of mine. So I, I never would put down, you know, but I certainly think it's important to understand who developed and wrote them. Um, right. I think having a name there is important. Um, uh, I also think that there are some which it's like one size fits all for all the exams. Uh, so um, I think having a separate one, which, you know, is really based on the content and thank you for the people are posting, at, you know, that they've used my materials, which is great. Um, but I think uh, this is, um, you know, there's a separate one for each of the four. Uh, I love the exam prep connect and both there are some that are digital and there are some that are pr um, print. I love the fact that this is both uh, in the third editions and you know we've really uh, spent a lot of time um, because uh, people are different kinds of learners. I, I call somebody called it a BSW or an MSW in a box because it has the tips, it has the content, it has the full length exam. And now you have me every morning at seven posting on the discussion board. So, uh, you know, uh, 
I think it's put together understanding what people need, you know, but I, I again, I'm not, I'm not here to, to, to say this is, you know, the end all be all, but um, I, uh, I, I always correspond, like the hardest thing is seeing people who are posting and not being able to talk to them directly. So um, if you know me and some of you may have um, emailed me in the past and may know I, I call people, I get back to you, you know, uh, uh, this is really, um, you know, I personally have a, a, um, a strong, um, conviction in personal development of social workers, and I really want you to be successful. And so that's why I do it. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Yeah, well, I don't know if we have time for any more questions, but one that seems to have been bubbling up quite a lot is, um, can uh, people purchase just the uh, online version of the Exam Prep Connect? And yes, they can pretty much from tomorrow on our site at springerpub.com. So we're going live with a couple of the, I think the masters and the clinical tomorrow, and then the other two titles, the other two areas will be available more towards the end of December. So go on to springerpub.com and you can sign up for alerts there and you'll be able to purchase um, direct access there. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you so much. So. Yeah, and uh, Kate, this is really a question for you. So it, they would be able to purchase without getting the print copy if they didn't? Yeah. If they, okay, yeah. good. So that's, you know, even more options. I think, you know, yeah. we want to make it as uh, people have different study habits and things like that. That's correct, yeah. And this is Lee again. I just want to reiterate to everybody attending because we still have a tremendously large audience listening to us. Yay! We have, yay. My we Zoom have, audience here. We, we will be sending out the recording to this to everyone within five to seven business days. And as you will see at the end, we'll have contact information if you have questions um, and we can certainly do what we can to help you because there were many, many, many questions. One last question, Dawn, from a bunch of people who have the second edition and they said, the second edition, is that still good? Is it valuable? Mm -hmm. Of course, um, just so you're you're clear, the the blueprint, the actual like uh, KSAs, the topics have not changed, um, and actually they won't change again until 2025. So the content, you know, which is really the bulk of the guide, right, is is relevant. Um, we uh, the and I'm really happy. Uh, Kate, that you talked about the online, you know, community. I think that now comes standard, right, with the third editions. So for some of you that have the second, you may want to just, you know, uh, be able to purchase the Exam Prep Connect, right? Which, you know, again, if this is something that's um, appealing to you, um, and there is, it, you know, the the new the new um, editions are a little bit longer because I put in some additional sort of you know, uh, tips and strategies and things like that. But certainly, you know, if you have a second edition, I, you know, d d don't throw it away or don't, it's, it's certainly relevant. Uh, if you haven't bought a book, you know, you might want to purchase the, the third editions. Yeah, so the test questions are, um, again, we're always adding, I don't want to say exactly, there's a few little nuances, but generally, um, if you're looking for additional test questions, I would really um, uh, I would really direct you to the practice tests. So remember how I said um, there's a practice test to go with each. So it maybe if you have a second edition and you're looking for another full length exam, it might be good to go on and just purchase the practice test, for example, for the third edition. Okay, so um, it doesn't your your um, yeah, so, you know, the, there's, the second editions are fine. I see people are like, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, so, um, and if there's some questions about returns and things, Springer right. can, you know, deal with those. We, so I just can. wanna, can I just wrap up and then yes, we- Yes, please, I'm happy thank that, you. I, I just wanna thank all of you. I, I can't tell you how uh, painful it is to be a postage stamp right in the, the, the upper right hand corner of your screen and not to be able to interact with you. Some of you have taken courses with me, I, you know, and, um, and many of you know, I, you know, I love interacting with people. That's really why I'm here. Um, so uh, that's the fun of it. So it's, 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 
been fun to watch your comments and I love how you're helping one another, but I just wanna, I wanna thank Springer for uh, hosting the webinar. And I really just wanna thank all of you and wish you um, the best. Um, and again, happy to help on an individual, <laughs> um, the happy to have, uh, somebody's commenting about my postage stamp, happy to help on an individual or, or letter. I mean, if you Google me, I, you know, I'm not that hard to find. So um, be well, be safe, uh, be kind, and go out and do the good work, right, that you were, you were trained to do. So thank you all. Thank you, Dawn. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.